Hello survivors and welcome to another Walking Dead Road to Survival video and in this video we're going to be going over Andrea 2000 and just giving my thoughts on you know how to build her this is going to be a starter guide for the character if you want to find out more about the character and the technical side of how each of her skills work how her rush her signature move and her passives I did do a preview video breaking down how they work and showing them how they work in in little separate clips you can see that in the top right hand corner but this is just going on my ideas in terms of how to actually build build this character now i will say this for one thing she has got an extremely high attack stat as you can see this is her fully maxed out at full lieutenant system at the moment obviously this is going to get higher as things go on but comparatively someone who has got the same max level 640 and 570 on the lieutenant system like sandy or decap michonne has quite a drastic reduction in their damage by like two to three thousand damage so she has got a very good base attack stat and this is going to help a lot towards one of her passives first we're going to go over her skills and i'm going to say which ones i think are the priorities to upgrade to get the best out of andrea 2000 now fortunately a lot of her stuff is already fully upgraded once you unlock her to certain grades her entire rush her entire signature move so it's going to be pretty much down to her passives as you can see they are fully maxed here and i would say we want to prioritize that very first one which should be the cheapest one to upgrade it's going to be electrical burns that's the one that gives her the burn for every basic attack that she does every signature move she does and every time she attacks on one of those multi-hit rushes it's going to be great and obviously she can spread that around because of her specialist skill so i'd say that is number one priority max it out as quickly as possible then we've got agility which i don't think is going to be that big a deal you could leave that till last it's only going to amplify the hit damage she's going to do it's not going to make any impact on the burn it really depends how you want to build this character if you want to build her where she's kind of like a princess with a like a say double attack rampage weapon and you're utilizing that with the rush multi hits that definitely can work but i kind of don't think you need to do that on andrea that's what princess is for andrea's special thing in her kit is that burn so you want to have the attack stat as high as possible and agility is not going to amplify her attack stat it only amplifies the actual sort of bonus damage when she does a hit so it's not going to change the amount of burn she does at all then we have thunder veil which i think is probably the second most important thing to upgrade because you're going to have to have really high attack stat to get that burn as high as possible when you have high attacks that the reflex are just going to be higher it's as simple as that it's pretty much as simple as that lightning rod is nice and at limit break two you get lightning rod two which changes the percentage up to 45 percent and crosshairs is great especially as she's going to be doing multi-hit she's going to be attacking some of the burn cat you know status quite a lot and the likeliness of them getting crosshairs is going to be pretty high and and if she takes someone out in those multi-hit rushes she could potentially give them crosshairs on one hit take them out in the next one and they're decapped and gone which is actually really nice then we have agility two and again it's the same as agility one i would not say this is a priority but i would say every single one of these skills are worth upgrading long term but it definitely would be the burn then thunder veil lightning rod and agility in terms of the order of prioritization if your military supplies were in short stock now we'll move on to her combat mods and like i said already because she's got a really high attack stat attack mods are going to be really good at amplifying this if i just go into the top left hand corner and change it to attack set you can see i've got quite a good attack on attack mod nearly 25 percent and you can see the boost she just gets just from that mod takes her up to 33.337 she's got a really high base um, attack and obviously mods only affect the base stats that she has so this is just kind of a no-brainer attack mods attack set trying to get that attack stat up as high as possible now the top right hand corner amplifies the damage in no way when it comes to actual stat it will only change the actual hit damage that she does on her all of her parts of her kit but it won't change anything to do with her burn so what you could potentially do here is be a bit cheeky and use a mod like this where you're going to get defense versus because you are going to probably have a character with really high attack stat dogpiled by the ai that's kind of how it works and any fast characters that do that are going to obviously do trait damage this is going to reduce that incoming damage by quite a, a large amount but this is not going to impact negatively her burn damage at all she's still going to do exactly the same amount of burn damage which if you want to build her that way that's the best way to do it if you do want to you know amplify her hits obviously do attack versus a particular um trait here that you want to get extra damage against now in the bottom right hand corner it's going to be pretty important to have 
generally speaking, a meta resist, kind of like bleed resist. However, because if you're just trying to utilize a burn or you've got other characters in the team that can get rid of that bleed issue, you're going to want to stop her from being controlled on parts of her kit. So like for instance, when she multi-hit rushes, she could be stunned off the first hit. But I'm pretty sure if she gets absolute defended, for instance, it wouldn't actually stop her from spreading the burn or actually burning the character. I don't think you have to do damage, you just have to actually attack. So something like a stun resist, which I have a pretty decent one here, would stop her from being like, or like have a decent chance of stopping her from being controlled partway through her rush against certain weapons for sure. So this is a basic lock-in for me. I'll just hit apply here in terms of the rough three that I'd go for off the start. And you can see that her attack stat has been boosted again because she's got a three slot bonus, an extra 12.1% down the bottom. And again, like I said, her, her attack stat's already been boosted up to 36,000, which is, of course, very nice. The last two mods are going to be difficult, and it really depends how you're building the character. Crit multiplier and a crit mod might be the way to go again if you're trying to get actual damage off of her attack hits but if you're trying to do what i'm doing which is going to be amplifying the burn and just putting things in here that are going to have no negative bonuses here like you could potentially just give her a bit more survivability so for instance you could give her graze in a hp mod wouldn't really recommend it but graze in a hp mod in terms of just giving her as much survivability as possible the bottom left hand corner doesn't really have much you could do but there are some sneaky mods you could do you could potentially do attack while taunted and attack while impaired these act as if it's boosting her attack stat and that would boost her passive burn it's going to be very unlikely it's going to happen on a consistent basis but it could counter certain characters like let's say mythic connor if mythic connor has a is going to have a turn one taunt he taunts the line that andrew is in she will have attack while taunted and be forced to attack him and he will take a massive burn an extra 100 percent attack stat that, that 15 to 20k burn will go to potentially like 30 to 40k burn. And, and a Connor's not really going to be able to deal with that for a two-turn burn. And that is what Connors are very susceptible to. is damage over time because he gets lots of bonus HP. So I definitely do an attack while a certain status effect. And you've got two that you can do, but I'd probably go for taunt myself. So I found an attack while taunted. You can see I can get an extra 80% attack stat here. It is only a gold mod. But if you have a plat mod, you can easily get 100 to 130% on this mod. I would probably say it's fine to go offset in this situation. If you can get a nice high percentage, it's definitely worth it. Because there is more taunt, you know, coming around. And it's coming around faster as well with the likes of Connor getting off turn one. I can see Connor making a little mini comeback in the future for sure. I've seen him around already. I think people are gearing up for the potential of him being buffed with Limit Break 2. Now the last mod is actually down to you and you could potentially do this whatever you want. You could go for that HP mod to give her just a bit more survivability. You could go for another resist. You could put a bleed resist in here as well as a stun resist. You could go for a main resist in here as well as a stun resist. It's pretty much up to you. Nothing I think will amplify her damage. I mean, I guess you could potentially go for attack while impaired as well, but maybe that's a bit overkill. I don't think anything really amplifies her damage at all. I think maybe a resist would be go the way to go, especially considering how many you know teams are around with Zacharys and stuff. So a bleed resist here wouldn't be a terrible idea. Again, I don't have any in plat, but I would definitely prioritize a platinum mod over a gold mod. Just mainly go for the percentage more than anything else. And again, offset is fine, but you want to try and have three mods within the set so you're getting some set bonus. You can see with three plat mods and two gold, I'm getting a 17% extra attack stat. And you can see she goes up to nearly 38,000 base. And now we're going to add her weapon and then we're going to add the leader skill and see how high we can drive that attack stat up. Okay, so when it comes to her weapon, I would definitely say the easiest way to do it is just to go into your inventory, go to your weapons, change it to tough, five star, and attack. It's going to be pretty much as simple as that. You want to have some of the highest attacks that you can get out of it. And I have got some pretty good tough weapons. On the left-hand side, I've got that double attack rampage weapon, which you could go for if you so wish. I also have a 20% weapon with rampage. Again, you could go with yourself if you, if you so wish. But I think I'm going to go with one of these weapons. I think this is probably the best weapon that you could probably get for her. The only downside of it is it has got a very large bonus. And as I did talk about in her preview video, 
Andrea is actually very slow to get her rush because she doesn't have a, a turn one or turn two signature move. It's turn four at limit break one, and then at limit break two, I think it goes to turn three. So she's still not going to be fast enough to get a, a natural turn three rush. She needs some, some help. And this 20% AP here is going to be extremely um, important in that third slot. 1535 is going to amplify her attack stat, which is going to amplify the burn. And the big 50% attack up the top, again, big damage. Big, big damage. So now we see her in a team just holding that weapon. And you can see she goes up to 58,000 attack. This is a very, very nice boost. Now we're going to get two other characters next to her, both holding 1535s and obviously one giving the leader bonus as well. And that attack stat should go up to, I reckon, at least 80,000. So I was a little short and we are actually going to be getting a little bit more of a boost than what you can see here because I am using Negan who isn't got the biggest leader skill. He only gives a 25% attack boost and I do believe we've got Ico who's got 30% and we have the new Conrad as well who gives 30% I believe as well. So she's gone up to 90,000 attack stat. This is just off base. So just as it stands, she's just going to get just under 14, 15,000 um, burn with her basic attacks and stuff. But with her 20% buff to self, obviously it's going to boost that up to over 100k. But potentially we could put two strong, more strong characters in the team to get her a 30% buff. I'm not actually going to do that. I'm not going to go with strong attacks in this team. I'm just going to go with uh, some other support characters. And we're mainly going to just see what Andrew can do by herself. Okay, so this is the team as I finish it off. And you can see that I have just added two other support characters. It's going to keep Andrew alive a bit better and help with the disarms and stuff like that. I have actually put a strong attacks weapon in Waylon's hands. But with only two strong characters here, it just means there's going to be a 20% buff that she gets off the weapon just throughout the fight, just to give her a 20% amplification the entire time. Okay, so we're going to start this fight, and we're going to try and disarm someone who's can be a bit annoying in terms of uh, someone who got a hit, otherwise they get buffed. And you can see I actually have a burn mod on Wayden, but my one should overtake it. And what's it going to do? 15,000 burn and the spread. Very nice indeed. Very, very nice indeed. I like it. I like it a lot i like it a lot we're gonna get the uh the good stuff to come out but you can see because of her kit and because i hit a crit with uh with uh um glenn she's got a natural turn to rush i just have to basically uh remove this this shield here and i can spread some burn around just by hitting this central character i probably should have uh actually this is this actually no this is a good test because the absolute defense, while it did absolute defend, it allowed me to spread the burn around to everybody. Otherwise, he would have been taken out. That was actually kind of cheeky. That was actually kind of cheeky. I will take it, though. I will take it. I'm going to stop this happening. I don't want him to do his control. And we'll stop her from doing hers as well, if we can. There we go. We managed to stun. So now the bleed, um, sorry, the burn should be just running havoc a little bit, as you can see. And it's just going to tick down which is going to be nice. And we can just, with the rest of it, I'm pretty sure we can pretty much just uh, auto our way out of it if we so wish. Um, I think we've got a character here. Am I right in thinking? Moon almost tells me. He says, not down. All I do is I use Glenn and it takes uh, AP away. Let's see if it works. It didn't work. I got lied to. Or maybe I had to take out these characters first. High potential that I had to take these characters out first. But um, yeah. Characters like what well, we did get actually destroyed, but this is this is the likeliness because she's got the really high attack stat. It is definitely the likely thing to happen. Unfortunately, it's just it's just the way it goes. It's just the way it goes. Um, but the rest of the battle should just be uh, be able to finish it off, which is uh, which is absolutely fine. And if we look at the end of battle stats, you can see that it did an extra one hundred forty-three thousand damage. This is definitely nice obviously um just the, the tick down but she's gonna work really nice in combination with other characters that do lots of damage over time as well so i'm gonna just test her out with a slightly different team and i'm gonna have her in a team with i think zachary and just to see the combination between the two now the difference is here we are going to lose a little bit of damage attacks that because we have lost the uh the strong attacks weapon but I'm still going to try and get the uh, everything going. Just everything ticking along. We're going to do a basic attack up the top. We're going to try and hit a crit down the bottom. 
So now she's still got a natural turn to rush. You can see a couple of characters are bleeding, a couple of characters resisted. Obviously, it is a little bit meta right now, so that's always going to be the case. And we're going to try and lead up with some other stuff. The bleed and burn should proc on a couple of characters. And then what I'll try and do is... We'll see, well, I don't think the Absolute Defender is going to come through this this time. We did, we did spread the burn around quite a bit. And she's still going to start getting reflected. This is this is the issue. But there we go. You saw the Absolute Defense proc up. And this is going to be quite good against characters like Mercer, who can be quite frustrating. Now we're going to try and take him out with little hits. There we go. I, don't want to, I didn't want to use Zachary's. And I think potentially this could be enough to just take it out because we've got burn and bleed on a lot of these characters it should be enough to take a, a couple of these characters out we should see double procs coming in yeah damage is going to come out and uh we'll just try and um finish these characters off if we can um i don't think she's going to do huge amounts of damage we'll see oh 16k it was a nice and it was a nice hit We've got, we've got to survive the big hit from Governor right now. One does get taken out, as is always the way, but the burn is going to finish off Mirabel at the end. So I think once you get into the flow of how Andrew works, you're going to be doing one or two things and then pretty much hitting auto and then selecting the right character just to get you know the right rush at the right time. You can see you can get her stuff going quite quickly if built with the right characters. She doesn't necessarily need Glenn, but she's to get a natural turn to rush. That was a natural turn to rush where you want to get that burn going off as quickly as possible. One of the biggest issues with burn and bleed is that it can be quite slow. So you want her to be, you know, popping off as quickly as possible. That's why Zachary's really strong because it's on his passive. So it's happening instantly. She has got on her passive so she can get it to happen instantly on her first turn to two characters. But if you get her built properly, you can see you can get on the second turn to five. And that's going to be pretty nice. I think Andrea is going to be a lot of fun. I think on Conquest, she's going to be really good. This build should work to a certain extent on Conquest. But like I say, she's got the highest attack stat and the biggest issue you've got on a lot of the, the defense teams and Conquest stages. AI is just going to absolutely try and destroy her. She got taken out in one of those raids just because that's what happened. Um, they did have a couple of fast characters, but AI does like the attack stat. It is basically going to get lured in. And uh, so, yeah, having something in her kit that keeps her a bit defensive is uh, quite important, I think. But this was just my ideas, a little starter guide for Andrea 2000. If you have any ideas on how you'd want to build her, let me know in the comments down below if you have any little tweaks to the way I've done things. But otherwise, I hope this has been helpful for you. That is going to be the end of my video. I want to thank you very much for tuning in. And as always, keep on surviving, guys. Keep on surviving. <laughs>